In this video, we're going to be going over the installation of these LED bar kits that I've made available for the most popular Ender 3 models on the market right now. I have applications ready for the Ender 3 V3, the V3 Plus, the Ender 3 SE and KE, as well as the Ender 3 S1. Each kit uses the exact same high quality aluminum framed LED bar that is nicely diffused with a daylight color temperature for the most comfortable viewing. The angle of the LED bars is also adjustable in all of the kits, so you can avoid any sort of glare. Best of all, everything is externally powered, so there is no complicated wiring. Installation is very simple and straightforward, so let's get started. We'll begin by taking a look at what is common to all of the kits. You'll get a box with the power supply, and inside of this box here, you'll also find your wire extensions, specifically the one here with the inline switch. The power supply is a North American style plug, so if you're outside of this region, you may need an adapter. You also get some additional hardware in case down the road you ever want to repurpose this LED bar and power supply, but for now we'll put those aside. You'll also get the LED bar itself, which I had mentioned earlier, has an aluminum frame and a nice diffused lens. And finally, there'll also be another bag of hardware that is specific to your application. The first application we'll start with is the Ender 3 SE and KE. These frames are identical, so the process is the same. In your kit, you'll receive two plastic brackets, as well as two countersunk flathead screws, and two of these aluminum clamps. The clamps will get attached to these brackets with the flathead thread forming screws, and you'll see a hole in the back. You'll want the clamp to face in this direction here. So the thumb screw is facing the longer and taller portion of the plastic bracket. These thread forming screws are specifically made to tap their own threads into plastic. And so you'll see here that you just drive them in with your Phillips head screwdriver and seat the countersunk head flat into the aluminum clamp. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And again, I'm gonna point out here that the thumb screw is pointing in the direction of the taller part of the plastic bracket. When you're finished with the second screw, it should look something like this. Looking at the bracket, you can see that there are two sides that look different from one another. This side here with the rounded cutout is what I will be calling the bottom of the bracket. And so you're gonna want those two brackets facing downwards with the rounded section facing down. And right now you're looking at them in the orientation that they would be installed on the printer. So right now I have the right hand side in my hand. I'm gonna put the female end of that barrel jacket coming out of the LED bar through the right hand side bracket. There will be labels on these parts, RS for right side and LS for left side that you'll be able to reference. And you'll notice that the LED bar is facing downwards. The LED bar press fits into the rectangular opening inside of these plastic brackets. Once you've done the right side and the left side, it should look something like this. And again, just to point out, the LED bar is facing down, and that would be the same side as the rounded cutouts of the plastic bracket. Now we're ready to install this assembly on our machine. We've got the left-hand side of the machine and the right-hand side of the machine. And as I'd mentioned earlier, the plastic brackets are respectively marked LS for left side, RS for right side, and you'll want that LED bar facing down. The aluminum clamps will clamp to the vertical extrusions, and you'll want to just snug them up both on the left and right hand side without fully tightening each side down until you have both sides snug. This will make sure that the brackets go on there nice and straight and you don't have them skewed in any one direction. The thumb screws themselves only need to be finger tight. Do not use any tools to try and tighten those further. They will hold on just fine finger tight. You do not need to go crazy with the torque. One other thing to make sure of as you're tightening these down is that the plastic brackets are in the highest position possible, like you'll see in this clip here, and that will make sure that they will never interfere with the gantry. Once you have those in place, we can now connect our inline switch harness, and so it's got the male connector, and these barrel jacks are twist lock connectors, so they will not accidentally come unplugged from one another. Now we can start to take care of the wire management, and those round cutouts at the bottom of the brackets are intended to hold the barrel jack connectors in place with these zip ties. The zip ties are intended to pass through those small holes in the plastic bracket, and this will tie up the wire harness so that it does not flop down and interfere with the print head. 
On the left hand side we've got another male connector and this will go unused as this would normally be used to daisy chain these LED bars together if you had more than one. And if you've done the installation correctly, you can see here with the print head in the highest position that it will not interfere with the LED bar kit. If you happen to have my universal spool stand, which is fully compatible with the Creality SE and KE, it'll also provide you with a very convenient wire management solution for the rest of the wires coming off of the LED bars. Since there's no guarantee that you'll have the spool stand, these wiring clips will not be included in the LED bar kit, but I will make them available for download. They're a quick and simple print, and you'll find that link to these clips in the video description down below. They'll snap onto the bars of the universal spool stand, and the wire itself will press fit into the channel on those clips. Now you can route the wire and the inline switch along the back of the universal spool stand, and this is a really nice way to hide that wire as well as provide a convenient location to reach that inline switch. The last step of the installation is to, of course, attach the power supply, where you'll find another male to female barrel jack connection. These are again twist locks, so they will not accidentally come apart. Then we can power on the LED bar, and you'll see these knurled knobs at the top, twist them to change the angle of the LED bar. In most cases, I like them facing straight down, but if you happen to have your printer up on a higher shelf and you want to avoid those LED bars glaring into your eyes, you can always twist them one or two notches away from you. Now you can enjoy much better visibility when printing, and also with the nice color rendering index rating of these LED bars, if you happen to be doing photography, videography, or time lapses of your prints, you'll enjoy the benefit of nice natural looking colors. And those of you with a keen eye for details may have noticed something else going on in this clip here, and that would be the 10 millimeter rod modification that I've also recently made available for the Ender 3 V3 SE and KE models. I'll link to the video for that upgrade in the top right hand corner of the screen, as it was instrumental in improving the bed leveling mesh situation on this printer. Next up, we've got the Ender 3 S1. This kit here is probably the most unique of all of the applications, and you'll see why in a moment. But for now, we'll take a look at the parts included in the kit. And we've got two plastic brackets. We have two flat head thread forming screws, as well as two aluminum clamps. And those clamps will get attached to our left hand side and right hand side brackets using the flat head thread forming screws. Make sure the thumb screw is pointing inwards towards the rest of the bracket as you attach it with the thread forming screw. These screws are specifically made for cutting their threads into plastic, so all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver to drive those in. You'll repeat the exact same process on the other side, again with the thumb screw facing the inside of the bracket, so the rest of the plastic part, and you'll tighten that single screw down. When you're finished, the two brackets should look something like this. Now I'm going to take these two brackets and I'm going to flip them around so that you are looking at them in the same orientation as they would be when installed on the printer if you were looking at the printer from the front. You'll notice on the LED bar that it has two barrel jack connectors. One side is female, one side is male, and the female side will go on the left hand side of the machine. So we're gonna put it through this bracket here and inside of the plastic bracket, you'll notice that there is a rectangular receptacle that matches with the profile of the LED bar. The LED bar will press fit inside of that receptacle, and at some point, you'll be able to stop pressing it in as it will bottom out. On the right-hand side bracket, you'll find the same rectangular receptacle. You'll insert the male barrel jack connector through, and again, press fit the LED bar into the plastic bracket. And you'll want the LED bar facing downwards when the brackets are in this orientation here. Now we can take this assembly and take it over to our Ender 3 S1. And you'll notice on the gantry, there are the two metal brackets on the left and right hand side that hold the V wheels for the gantry motion system. We'll be using our clamps to clamp onto these metal brackets. And you'll want to do your best here to center the LED bar with respect to your machine. And when tightening the thumb screws, Gradually tighten the left and right hand side back and forth. Do not tighten one side all at once as it may lead to the brackets being skewed. Then on the right hand side, you can tie up the spare barrel jack connector. You can use the included zip ties and those ties will pass through the small cutouts in the side of the plastic bracket. 
And on the left hand side with the female barrel jack connector, this is where we are going to connect our inline switch harness. And these barrel jack connectors are twist lock connectors, so they will not come apart by themselves. And we can do the same thing on this side. We'll take the included zip ties, we'll insert them through the holes in the plastic bracket, cut off the excess with our side cutters, and now we can route the rest of the harness up and around the profile of the bracket. There are more zip tie cutouts along the profile of these mounting brackets, so we can use those to secure the rest of our wire. I mentioned earlier that the S1 kit is a little bit special and that's because it travels up and down with the gantry. And so what we need to do here is we need to secure the rest of this wire harness to the harness coming off of the print head. And for that, I've got these included alligator style clips. There's a channel at the top of the clip where the LED wire will press fit into. And then there are these teeth that will grip onto the ribbon cable. And I would recommend staggering the direction of these clips as you work your way down the ribbon cable. So one will point one way, the next one will point the other, and this will prevent them from coming off. Next, we can attach our power supply to our inline switch. And again, we've got these locking style barrel jack connectors, and we've got the North American style power supply. Now you're ready to flip the switch and turn your LED bar on. On the left and right hand side of the bar, you'll find these knurled knobs where you can adjust the angle of the LED bar. Despite being attached to the gantry, the LEDs of course will be sitting higher than the nozzle so they will not be interfering with your print or the print head itself. And when they're turned on, they nicely illuminate your workpiece. LED bars are comfortably diffused and they're not intended to be extremely bright. When they're too bright, it actually makes things harder to see because all of the colors and details of your workpiece will get washed out. You may also notice here that I'm using my universal spool stand to feed the filament in through the top of the Ender 3 S1. And the LED bar kit is fully compatible with the universal spool stand, so there's no interference with the filament path itself. It's a nice addition to the Ender 3 S1, and it fits many of the other Ender 3 models, as well as the K1 and K1 Max series, if you happen to have one of those. The final application here is the Ender 3 V3 and Ender 3 V3 Plus. These are the Corex Z machines. And in these kits here, you'll get two plastic brackets, two aluminum clamps, as well as two of these flat head thread forming screws. And at the bottom of the plastic brackets, you'll find the round cutout section, and those will be facing down. The aluminum clamps will have the thumb screws facing upwards in the opposite direction, and they'll get attached with those flat head thread forming screws. These thread forming screws are specifically made for cutting their own threads into plastic parts. So you can simply drive them directly into the plastic brackets and you do not need to tap any holes. And here I want to reiterate the fact that the thumb screw faces upwards in the opposite direction of that circular cutout in the bottom of the bracket. And this is very important as this gap that I'm pointing to now will be the area that the V3 frame slips into and the clamps will clamp onto the frame in that small section there. And so we'll do the left hand side bracket now. Again, it's the same process where the thumb screw faces upwards. We use the flathead screw to secure the aluminum clamp to the plastic bracket. And now what we're gonna do is attach the LED bar. So inside of these plastic pieces here, you'll see a rectangular receptacle. And right now you're looking at the brackets in the direction that they would be as if you were looking at the printer from the front. So right now I'm holding the right hand side bracket and I'm inserting the female barrel jack connector through that bracket and I'm press fitting the LED bar into the rectangular receptacle. The LED bar is facing downwards and now I'll do the left hand side and it's the exact same process. It will press fit into place and you'll feel it stop at some point. Now we can bring this assembly back over to the machine and you can see that I have it in the exact same orientation as I just had it in the previous clip. And you can see how I'm inserting the top edge of the die cast frame into the aluminum clamp and I'll be clamping it down with those thumb screws. You'll want to center the bar on your frame and you can see that both pieces are marked with an LS for left hand side and RS for right hand side. And that's for when you're looking at the machine from the front. 
Now on the left hand side, we've got the male barrel jack connector that we can just tie up and away with the included zip ties. And the zip ties get inserted in through those holes in the plastic part. And on the right hand side, we can connect our inline switch harness with the twist lock barrel jack connectors. And here we can also use the included zip ties to tie the barrel jack connectors up to the plastic brackets. Now you've got a couple options here for routing the wire down the side of the frame. You can use these adhesive cable tie clips. You can already see that I've got a few attached to the side of the frame on this V3, and that's because I'm using my universal spool stand, and I was using those wire clips to hold the runout sensor relocation harness. Now we'll jump over to the installation on the V3 Plus. So the kit is exactly the same. This pre-assembly is identical, and we can take our assembly and install it in the exact same way on the V3 Plus as we did on the regular size V3. The frame is larger, but you'll do the same process here and you'll center the LED bar, clamp it down to the frame, and just make sure that the barrel jack connector and harness is running up and over the frame and not underneath of it. Now you can take your inline switch harness and on the back of the V3 Plus, you have these extra support bars that are not available on the regular size V3, and you can use these to conveniently tie down your inline switch and harness. But as I've shown with the other applications, if you are running my universal spool stand, you can, in this case, also leverage off of the fact that you've got this nice vertical bar and you can use these wire harness clips that I've made available for download, link in the video description below, and they'll clip onto the bars of the universal spool stand and you can press fit the wire harness of the LED bar kit into those clips and conveniently run it down the back of the universal spool stand. And this optional wire routing method would be both the same on the V3 and V3 Plus, and at which point now you can connect your power supply. So again, you've got the power supply harness with the locking barrel jack connectors, twist the two together, plug in your North American style power supply and power on your LED bar. Now you can enjoy the nicely diffused daytime temperature LED light cast down onto your workpiece. As you can see, it makes a big difference when you're in a room with poor lighting, or perhaps you've got your printer stored in some sort of cabinet or enclosure where you could use that little bit of extra light to be able to see what you're doing or how your print is turning out. And despite these V3 Core XZ machines homing upwards to the top of the machine, the LED bar kit does not interfere whatsoever with the print head or the gantry. With the V3 and V3 Plus, since these kits are identical, just keep in mind here that there are the knurled knobs on the right and left hand side of the LED bar that you can grab and twist to adjust the angle of the bar. With the taller frame of the V3 Plus, the LED bar is still plenty bright to cast a sufficient amount of light down towards your printed part. And you can see here on a tall white part, the light distribution is nice and uniform across the entire part. There are no hot spots. So that's it for this video. If you guys are looking for these kits, you'll find them on my website, embracemaking.com, where you'll also find tons of other upgrades and accessories for your 3D printers, as well as your laser cutters if you're into those. And please don't forget to check out my other videos, as well as subscribe to this channel if you're looking for more content like this. Thanks for watching.